Hello, today's story is from Puddle Lane. It's called Magic at Midnight, 12 at Night. And here we can see what our story is about today. We have a bird, this bird is an owl, and two cats, and you can see the moon here. So that's our story today. And our story is in the town in this street. And this street is called Puddle Lane. Here you can see Puddle Lane. A lane is a small road, no cars, only people. We can call this a lane. Maybe a car, but very, very small. Let's have a look at our story today. I'm going to start here. And this is the magician's house. You can see in Puddle Lane, there's the houses. We come all the way down to some big gates, some big birds here. And this house is where the magician lives. The magician's house. What can we see in the picture? We can see this the building and a clock and the clock says 12 so it's midnight it's dark it should be asleep we have a cat a different cat two cats and a boy the boy is metal he's an iron boy and he's got a hammer and a bell here and when this is 12, 1, 2, the boy can hit the bell. Dong, dong. So at 12, he can hit the bell 12 times. Let's see what happens in our story. It was a bright, moonlit night. Moonlit means the moon is out and you can see at night because of the moon. Tim and Tessa were on the roof. This is Tim and Tessa and this is roof, the roof. So they are on the roof of the magician's house when the hands of the clock on the little tower moved on to 12. So this is the roof and a little tower. This is tower and the hands, this is the hands of the clock and they are 12. The iron boy who stood under the clock lifted his hammer and struck the bell. Dong, 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 midnight. Let's have a look. Here's the boy and the hammer and the yellow bell. So he hits the bell 12, he will hit the bell 12 times. Hello, said Tessa. The iron boy said nothing. Perhaps he can't speak, said Tim. I don't think he's alive. Right, so he's not alive, he's just metal. A car isn't alive. We're alive because we're people. He must be alive if he can strike the bell, said Tessa. So here's the iron boy and the tower and the hammer. And this bird is an owl. Owl. And here we have the two cats. Just then, the barn owl landed softly on the roof beside them. 
Is the Iron Boy alive? Asked Tessa. This is Tessa. And this is the Iron Boy. He's alive, in a way, said the owl. This here, he's an owl. He was made in the magical country of Zorn. He can see and he can think, but he can't talk and he can't move, except to strike the bell. So the Iron Boy, he can't walk, he can't talk, but he can move his arm and hit the bell. Poor Iron Boy, said Tessa. He must be very lonely up here on the roof. Could we help him to move? So he's lonely. He's got no friends, no one to talk to. The barn owl landed on the roof. Could we help the Iron Boy to move? asked Tessa. This is the owl and the roof and here's the two cats and Tessa. Perhaps you could. Perhaps it's like maybe, said the owl. The wise woman who lives in the round house in Candletown has a jar of magic silver water. So it's magic. It can make things happen are magic. Silver this is silver colour. Here, this is silver. If someone poured the silver water over the iron boy, he would be able to strike 13 on the bell. He could then move and talk. Why doesn't somebody do it? asked him. No one has thought about it before, said the owl. Could we do it? asked Tessa. I expect so, said the owl. I'll take you to the wise woman. Now, if you like, the wise woman, very, very clever. She knows lots of things. The wise woman has a jar of magic silver water, said the owl. Is that owl? and the moon and look the two cats and they can fly over the town he opened his wings this here wing wing so they can fly and Tim and Tessa climbed onto his back the owl flew off over the houses and across the market square so here you can see the market square where you can buy your vegetables and the houses and he is over, he fly over like the clouds, over. Tim and Tessa climbed onto the owl's back and he flew off over the houses. There he is, he can fly off. This is a round house like a circle it's round the windows door and a an wise old lady she lives here it's very clever here's the owl Tim and Tess the cats he glided down to the door of a round stone house by the river the windows shut the windows shone in the darkness the owl gave a strange cry. The door opened and an old woman looked out. I brought two cats to see you, wise woman, said the owl. They want some of the magic silver water to pour over the iron boy who stands on the roof of the magician's house. So there they are talking to the wise old woman in the round house. The door opened and an old woman looked out. This is the 
the old woman and the door. You can see the owl and the two cats. Come in, said the wise woman. She opened the door wider. So here, open the door up. Very big here, we can say wide. And they went inside. Why do you want to pour the water over the iron boy? She asked. He's very useful up there on the roof. He strikes the hours on the bell. But he must be so lonely, said Tessa. He can't even walk about, said Tem. The wise woman smiled. I don't know what the magician will say, she said. But if you want to help the iron boy, you shall. And here we can see the silver water in the bottle. Come in, said the wise woman. She opened the door and they went inside. Here we can see the lady, the wise old woman, and the cooking, and the silver water, and the fire to keep warm. We have here Owl, Tim and Tess, the cats. She picked up a little glass bottle and poured some silver water into it. If you pour three drops of this magic silver water over the iron boy, then the next time he strikes midnight, he will find that he can strike 13. And when he does that, he will be able to move and talk. Oh, thank you, said Tim and Tessa. The wise woman put the little bottle round Tessa's neck. So here's the little bottle. And you can see here, this can go round the cat's neck. Pour three drops of silver water over the iron boy said the wise woman. Here we go, here's the owl. Here you can see the silver water around Tess's neck. And here's Tim. Oh, there's another cat here. The two little cats climbed onto the owl's back and the barn owl flew back over the roofs of the houses to the magician's garden. You mustn't go climbing about with that bottle, he said. You'll break it. I'll come back for you tonight at 11 o'clock. He flew away over the trees. Pegs shook her head when they told her what they were going to do. That's her name. Her name is Pegs. I hope the magician won't mind, she said. I'm sure he won't, said Tessa. The barn owl flew back to the garden. I will come back for you at 11 o'clock, he said. So there he is, he's going to fly away. And these two friends have the magic silver water. Here they are, and it's dark. There's an owl and a different bird. This bird we call a swan. This is a swan owl. The barn owl was late. So he didn't come at 11. He come after 11. Maybe 11.40? 11.50? The iron boy struck the bell 11 times. And still the owl didn't come. What can have happened? asked Tessa. I expect he's hunting, said Tim. Another half hour went by. Let's go, said Tessa. We've got to be there before midnight. At that moment the owl flew down over the trees. A beautiful white swan was with him. This is the beautiful white swan. Oh, 
I am sorry I'm late, cried the owl, as he glided down, but I met this swan. She needs your help. Tim and Tessa hadn't seen a swan before. They felt a little nervous, so a little scared. But the swan looked very beautiful in the moonlight. So here we are. Here's the swan. This is a swan and an owl. Who else do we have? Tim and Tess and the silver bottle. Here, look, you can see the silver water. The owl told me that you have magic silver water, she said. Yes, said Tessa, it's for the iron boy. Two of my children were turned into stone by the king of the fire dragons in the country of Zan, said the swan. They stand on the stone, post, stone gate posts in the magician's garden. The silver water is very powerful, it's very strong. It might help them to become swans again. Will you pour some over their heads and see? Will you pour magic silver water over the stone swans? Asked the swan. Back here, at the beginning, you can see the magician's house and this here is a stone swan. And here is a stone swan. Here you can see the owl, Tim and Tess, the silver, magic silver water and a swan. But we need the silver water for the iron boy, said Tim. You only need three drops, said the owl. Three drops are enough. Tessa thought for a moment. All right, she said, but we'll have to be quick. It's nearly midnight, so it's nearly 12. Let's go up on the roof to the iron boy first. The owl spread his wings and the cat climbed onto his back. So here we are. His wings are open so we can say spread like that. Spread. Spread his wings. Let's go up on the roof to the iron boy, said Tessa. The cat climbed onto the owl's back. So here are, they climb onto the owl's back. Here you can see the swan, owl, Tim and Tess, and the roof. And here's the tower, and the clock, and the iron boy, and the hammer, and the bell. The owl flew up to the clock tower. The swan flew with them and alighted on the roof. So they stopped flying and they stand on the roof. So they alighted. Tough word, that one. Tim and Tessa scrambled off. So they climb, climb down. The owl's back and looked down. The iron boy was just below them. So they are here. They look down here and they can see the iron boy. Here's the iron boy and the bell and the hammer. Owl, Swan, Tim and Tess with the silver water. Tess, Tessa took the bottle and pulled off the cap. Very carefully she dropped three drops of the magic silver water onto the iron boy's head. The drops splashed down. They sparkled for a moment in the moonlight. Then they were gone. So here you can see his head and you can see sparkle here. Tessa poured three drops of magic silver water onto the iron boy's head. Here you can see the 
Stone Swan, Owl, Tessa with the Silver Water, and the Moon. And you can see the Swan and the Owl flying. Is that all we have to do? asked Tessa. That's all, said the Owl. Nothing will happen before midnight. Quick, we must fly to the Stone Swans. Tim and Tessa climbed on the owl's back. The owl glided down to the gateposts. Tessa poured three drops of magic water onto the first swan. So here, the birds, they're flying, but they don't move their wings. So they glide like a paper plane. We can say, can glide. Tessa poured three drops of magic silver water onto the stone swan. This is a stone swan. This is stone, this is stone, and this is a stone swan. Here, what time is it? Twelve. Twelve o'clock. Here's the iron boy, the tower, and the roof. This is the roof. Who do we have here? This is the swan. The hands of the clock on the roof of the magician's house moved on to twelve. The iron boy lifted his hammer and began to strike twelve. Dong, 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 dong. Quick, cried the swan. Tessa, be quick. So he's going to hit the hammer and count. 12. The iron boy began to strike. That means hit. Dong the bell. You can see here Tessa, magic silver water, and the drops, owl, and the stone swan. This is stone. And here's the iron boy and the clock tower. Here's the clock and the roof. The owl spread his wings. Tessa scrambled onto his back. So climb quickly. Dong, dong, dong. The bell was still ringing. There wasn't time for Tessa to climb down. As the owl glided over the second stone swan, she leaned out and poured the rest of the magic silver water over him. Dong, 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 midnight. So here you are. She's pouring the silver, magic silver water onto the stone swan. Tessa poured all the rest of the magic silver water over the stone swan. Here's the iron boy and the bell. This is the bell and this is the hammer. You can see a swan, two cats, and an owl. Tessa and the owl landed on the wall. For a moment, there was silence, so no sound. And then they heard the iron boy strike the bell once more. Dong! The iron boy struck the bell again. Dong! It's the moon, swan, stone swan, this is stone, stone swan, and the gates to the magician's house, and you can see the owl and the cats on the wall, this is the wall. The moonlight shone down on the swans as Tim and Tessa watched. The birds turned silvery white, this is silver, this colour, this is silver. The hard stone softened into feathers. The swans lifted their wings. There was a wild cry from the swan on the wall. And the three birds flew up into the sky. They circled over the magician's garden. And then flew off westwards. Means they go west. Over the trees. So the stone birds are magic and they turn into 
real swans. The swans lifted their wings and flew up into the sky. Here you can see the owl, two cats and the moon. And here you can see the three stones, three, three swans and the moon fly over the trees. The three swans fly over the trees. The cats watch them until they were out of sight. Out of sight, you can't see them too far. They've gone, said Tessa rather sadly. They'll come back, said the owl, but they won't stand on the gateposts. They'll swim in the lake. They're free now. They'll come flying back. What has happened to the iron boy? asked him. Let's go and see, said the owl. So the swans fly away. Let's go and see the iron boy, said the owl. Well, here's the owl and the two cats. This is the clock and the clock tower. As they flew up over the roof, Tessa cried out, There's no one there. The place where the iron boy had stood was empty. Look, no iron boy. He's gone. The owl swung closer over the roof. There was no sign of the iron boy. The iron boy must be alive, said the owl. He's gone. The owl glided down to the garden and Tim and Tessa got off his back. I'm glad he's gone, said Tim. He'll be much happier now he's alive. I'm glad too, said Tessa, but I hope they'll all come back one day. So there we go. They flew over the roof. The iron boy had gone. So that's our story today. Puddle Lane. And our story today, Magic at Midnight. There we go. Bye-bye.